clap, 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 clap your hands, it's your birthday. Clap, 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 it's your hands. We're just syncing audio. Yeah, that's how you sync the audio. <laughs> um, and also clap it up for Riley, it's his birthday. Clap it up for me, everybody. Comment, comment the emoji that is the clap. Yes. The yeah. If, thank you, K. So if you don't know, we got the boy K here. We're in beautiful Bangkok, Thailand. This is where I've been based for the past year. So this is the story about when I was 25, I moved to Thailand. Okay. Isn't that crazy? Is crazy. So um, today is just a day that I want to reflect on that. Wait, how old are you now? Because... You're turning 30 today? No. <laughs> okay, so oh. this is the reason I want to do this video and I want to celebrate my birthday because this is my last birthday in my 20s. So yeah, oh, okay. so today is August 23rd, 2018, and it happens to be my birthday, and so um, yeah, I wanted to sit down and just um, talk about myself. Yeah, talk about myself. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So that's what this is gonna be about. So I posted on my Instagram page at Living That Life. Dot TV. If you're not following that uh, and you're a fan, like definitely follow that. I'm active on that every day, asking everyone's questions. So I'm gonna ask her, ask or answer some um, questions people asked me, and I'm also gonna just share like my life story. Is because I want this birthday and I want every birthday to be about celebrating being alive another year. I think that's what birthdays should be about. They should be about literally celebrating your life that you made it another year yeah you're still alive especially in Bangkok exactly you're still alive like tragedy can strike lightning can strike me you know right now and I drive a motorbike in Bangkok and you know accidents happen people get sick like things happen you could die and so today I'm just celebrating being alive another year and that's what I'm gonna talk about so um yeah First of all, uh, introducing the guest, he was uh, happened to be free and fellow uh, video guy, fellow photographer and personal trainer and I actually met him through YouTube because he's getting into the YouTube game and uh, he's half Russian, half Argentinian, half Canadian, I like to say. <laughs> and um, yeah, 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 it's Kay. Um, yeah, how long have you been in Bangkok real quick? Um, I've been in Bangkok for a year and a half. I moved back in April here, so already, what, five months, coming you're, to six? You're in five months? You're in six months? Yeah, but I used to live here back in 2014, 15 for a year. So all together, a year and a half. You, it was supposed to be a pit stop. I was living in Bali uh, for a few months, and then I was like, I want to go explore more. So I went to Thailand. I wanted to stay in Bangkok for only a week. Um, even less just because I thought it's a concrete jungle and it's just yeah this it's intimidating at first yeah and this that's what I imagined I thought it was gonna be dirty and sucks but I came here I fell in love I'm not joking the second day I was here um, I just <laughs> fell in love with the city the people the food the colors and then I ended up staying for almost a year so right now I'm focused on fitness I do YouTube on the side just kind of for fun for now I just don't have time to edit because I'm constantly um, in the gym training clients and just I'm a personal trainer here and yeah I want to be here for a long time fitness is one way you can go yeah. many people do English school yeah. maybe a corporate job but I mean I have a lot of fun I spend most of my day in the gym and then in my free time do some video work some photography yeah, yeah. cool so yeah, and so he actually hit me up because he, uh, he's doing a series called Day in the Life of a Farang. And uh, Falang means foreigner in Thai. So he's doing a, a YouTube video series profiling different expats in Bangkok. And he saw me, you know, on YouTube probably and uh, hit me up on this channel before about teaching English is a great way to have an excuse to break into the international lifestyle. I guess I meet tons and tons of uh, teachers who they started out doing that years ago. Now they're an entrepreneur or they're into their personal trainer or they own a business. So yeah, that is working abroad. And 
you know I'm a big proponent of course of the international lifestyle and that's kind of what my channel is built upon and I happen to do it the online way the working remotely way so that is one way to have travel be a part of your life and international lifestyle and I kind of bu bunch those two together um, but obviously if you ask me and you're a young person and you're thinking about a career and you have this vision in the back of your head like I want to be working in other places around the world like tropical places and, and I want to visit Tahiti and India and I want to be like doing business in China and Japan and like in South America if you want to be an international business person I would say the best way to scratch that itch is have an internet based career and so this whole YouTube channel this past four years of my life um, well three years of my life YouTubing it but four years living it I started my YouTube channel a year after moving out to Thailand um, that's what I'm all about so if you're just tuning in somehow uh, go to my blog livingthatlife.com and read about how I make money online and how uh, the different ways that my digital nomad friends have remote careers and work from laptops like there's a guy next to us working right now on his laptop and um, obviously I'm gonna <laughs> um, so that's what I do I am a internet entrepreneur and um, yeah let's finally get into the meat and potatoes of how how I got here and um, with my opening line at 25 I moved to Thailand and I always think about that sentence like I'm gonna look back like when I'm 40, 60, 80, 90. Yeah, when I'm 20, when I was 25, I moved to Thailand. You're gonna be one of those guys in Seoul Cowboy. <laughs> Who knows, man? I'm <laughs> I'm definitely gonna be more mobile than these old, uh, old nice fellas down here. What way? To um, put it? because like when when our grandparents and when some of the retirees he's spoke, speaking about, when they grew up, we didn't have these opportunities. When our parents grew up, when our grandparents grew up, they did not live in this digital crazy economy. And so we, I and him too, doing online business with YouTube, we are in the forefront. We're in the first generation in history that can have a trade that is work from anywhere. The other night I was watching a video about the fall of the Roman Empire and how the Roman Empire um, made these laws that required um, families to stick in their trade. So if a kid was born, it was by law. And I didn't, I didn't know this. It was by law that you must stick to that trade, whether it meant shoemakers in the Roman Empire, the Roman yeah, Empire made that law for you know, economic reasons. They were like, we need to keep you know, the economy going. Like we're gonna force people to do what, they, to do what their family has always done. Um, and now, like back then, of course, there were no careers that work from anywhere. You have to be in one place, and most careers still are in one place. This is the first generation ever that you can have a career that is totally in the cloud. And so, obviously, I'm passionate about that when I speak about it because it allows me to be here in beautiful Bangkok in this uh, beautiful view. So, I wanted to share, people don't know, the story of my life, like my background. So born in America, regular middle class upbringing uh, in the suburbs of Seattle, Bellevue, Washington. Um, I had a great childhood, so that's um, one of the things I am more and more realizing that I'm grateful for. I had a great childhood, fun childhood. Uh, I grew up down the street from Danny and Parker, who are my two best friends that um, Parker lives out here with me for the past four years and Danny always comes out and visits like twice a year. We just went around Europe for four weeks, all three of us. Um, so I had a great childhood, um, played sports, played uh, basketball, football, baseball, um, was good at sports. Um, very American. Very American. Typical American upbringing. Um, and yeah, typical American upbringing. Went to, went to high school, went to college and um, got my degree in genetics and cell biology. And so why did I choose that? Well, I have I grew up a curious cat. You know, I'm kind of like a low-key nerd, but like in the jock crowd, you know, on the football team, but like low-key, like taking all the science classes and stuff. 
And so I wanted to choose a major that I would actually be like interested in learning. So I, was, I remember looking through the catalog. It's literally like, like a catalog okay. when you sign up for university. Did you ever go to college? Yeah, yeah, psychology. Yeah, I'm like looking through like the sciences. I'm like, mm, physics, that sounds too boring. Or like biochemistry, like, uh, oh, genetics and cell biology. Oh, that's, that sounds like futuristic stuff. Um, and I was a big fan of this science magazine called Discover Magazine at the time. And it was all about like futurism and like breaking technologies. So I really got into like uh, uh, future technologies when I was like high school, late high school. I mean, probably just like senior year of high school. So yeah, I wanted to get into the field of, of cutting edge technology and genetics I knew was about to have a breakthrough. And um, of course, it's still happening now. Um, so yeah, I chose that, but then I realized um, about you know junior or senior year that, oh, this is just a major that sets you up to get a job in a lab, wearing a white coat, working the nine to five. Uh, it's the ultimate nine to five. Um, working for a big medical company, pharmaceutical company, research company, and sad but true to add insult to injury, those lab workers get paid shit. They actually get paid really low. And um, I enjoyed learning. I really enjoyed the information. I, it was good, but um, but you felt like didn't you feel like you could make it work? Like you, if your focus was to make it all more like um, digital, more um, mobile, nomadic, if you want yeah. to call it that. You didn't feel like you could. Make oh, yeah, it? yeah. If I wanted to create an online business around my passion for science, which I will do, then I can do that. But. Um, so, but anyways, I during my summer jobs of college, I uh, got, I did door to door sales, um, and I was to, I was a total shy kid like growing up. Like unless you knew me, I was like totally introverted kid. And um, after freshman year of college, one of my friends said, "Yeah, I just, yo, dude, I just made a thousand bucks last week." And I was like, "What? How did you make a thousand bucks in a week?" And he's like, "Yeah, this ad off Craigslist." And he's like, "Yeah, it's selling Comcast door to door." Like basically selling people their, their Wi-Fi subscriptions or getting them to switch over from the competitor for cable, internet, and phone service. And I, I was like, sign me up. Where do I sign up? So I did that for all my summer colleges, and I did pretty good. And then after college, I knew I didn't want to jump into like a serious like scientific career. Wait, 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 um, wait, 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 wait. Why? How did, what did you make? Like how, how good was it? Oh, I was making like a... Th- a thousand bucks a week like a thousand, a thousand bucks, a, bucks week. a week a thousand bucks a week during college summer wow. so I, I would I would come around like after college summer with like eight ten grand save and I was like balling I was like yeah I actually hired a couple of the uh, frat uh, boys uh, underneath me or yeah I trained them so and I mean, got like, like going door to door sales yeah. is one of the hardest sales yeah so why do you think you were able to make it well, so yeah, the reason that I was, um, you know, above average um, in terms of earnings was I think my shyness played into my favor um, looking back, like unnoticed, unnoticeably, because uh, I was so like such a uh, shy, blonde, ginger kid, like not pushy at all. And I realized I was successful because I would smile at the door and I didn't even realize it. I would say, hi. And if, if you see, this is human psychology 101, if someone looks at you and smiles, you smile back without even thinking about it. So this works in door-to-door sales, is you smile, that's the first thing they, they see of you, and then they smile back, and then from now on, it's a positive attitude. It's a positive okay. interaction, because they're just smiling. They can't go back to, oh, what are you? So anyways, I ended up doing good, um, and I'm um, you know, relatively intelligent, you know, that goes. You know, people that are successful more than likely tend to be intelligent. So I'm like a science kid. So, you know, I got A's and B's. I graduated uh, high school with a 3.3 and a college like with about 3.3. So like I can take a test. I can memorize. So there's that. They work to my advantage. And of course, a lot of that has to do with fucking genetics. So that's one thing I'm lucky with, you know, good, good, solid brain. (laughs) Um, You know. You could. That's that's a good argument for you know why people are successful. They're just born smart. That that's that's true for a lot of people. Anyways, um, after college, this is what. How did I get here? How did I get here to Vancouver? So, um, I graduated a year ahead of Parker, 
And for two years after college, I went back to my door-to-door job because I was like, I don't know what I want to do yet. I don't want to get like a fucking job job yet. I'm just going to just like do this door-to-door thing year round and see if I can stack some cheese. And um, to be honest, what I really wanted to do was go to music school. And I was like, yeah, fuck this science shit. I do not want to be a lab rat. I do yeah. not want to be a lab slave. And um, at the same time, I started getting into watching YouTube. So my junior year in college, I started watching a lot of YouTube. And I started to get red pills about the pharmaceutical industry, about Buddhist philosophy, about geopolitics and the Federal Reserve banking system. And like all these red pills, like I swallowed the red pill my junior year of college. And I was just like, wow, my mind was getting blown. Like, oh my God, the pharmaceutical industry is such an just that it's an industry yeah my major was all the kids in my classes were going to work for pharmaceutical companies these big big pharma companies and it's all a scam the the pharmaceutical industry in summary if you don't know it's a for-profit business and it's not in the business of curing people of their diseases it's in the business of getting them on a recurring subscription for these pills so it's in the business of um, covering up the symptoms, helping you with the symptoms, not getting down to the underlying core root cause of the disease, which for all chronic diseases is inflammation of the body because of the modern day diet, uh, cancer being one of the chronic diseases, and a heart disease. Those are the two top chronic diseases, two top killers as far as health, and the root cause of it is a poor, poor diet. <laughs> Inflammation of the body. It's we're not eating raw fruits and vegetables like humans have for us since the beginning of history. Um, anyway, so I realized that, and I was like, dude, fuck the pharmaceutical industry. Totally career change. And so I was just doing sales. Didn't know what I wanted to do. Just stacking money. Which, if you don't know what you want to do, um, stack Gary, money. <laughs> stack money and get into sales. That's what Gary Vee says. A lot of entrepreneurs yeah. say the same thing. Rich dad, poor dad, same thing. Yeah, rich dad, poor. If you don't know what to do, get a sales job. It will teach you business skills. It will teach you a lot of great skills. Not only in like selling. What is selling? Selling is just influence. Selling is communication. So I became a greater, greater communicator through that experience. And um, go ahead, take it while I eat this popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was gonna say I did the same thing. Like. Um, I wanted to get really good at sales and I went to sell the toughest thing I could sell, which was a paper book that nobody uses anymore, which is called Yellow Pages. Really? You sold door to door? No, I didn't. So, I, yeah, so I wanted to like learn sales and I went to sell the toughest thing I could sell, which was Yellow Pages or something that nobody read. And um, I sold both. The actual yellow page, like ads in the yellow pages. Okay. The selling part was contacting businesses, like talking to 20, 30, 50 businesses a day and trying to get them to advertise somewhere where you shouldn't really advertise. Yeah, you're right. Unless. Sure back then it was good. But it, that was 2012. I'm in the service business of providing fitness or like personal training. It's so easy comparing to selling ads in a yellow pages book or even going door yeah. to door yeah if you learn that you'll yeah. be good for it to sell anything yeah anything or especially if you're passionate about the thing you're selling eventually that you find like in your business you're golden yeah that's a golden ticket which is why I'm passionate about the education revolution and um, sorry could you mention it one more time keywords 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 yeah <laughs> It's, uh, I mean, yeah, everything is keyword, and a lot of people found me through digital nomad keyword, but anyway, that's beside the point. But, um, see, I, I'm making money off of, my, my whole YouTube channel is going into the future, is, is going to be funded, um, slash sponsored, slash making money in the online, ed- in the online education revolution industry. And I'm passionate about that because it changed my life. I learned about e-commerce through an online course that I bought for $600. And so my whole thing is we live in the online education revolution. Like college is very, very expensive. Now it's a lot of fun and that's a whole debate whether that's worth the 50 grand. And um, I, yeah, or a hundred grand. It can can be way more on what? College? College, yeah. So, um, like, I can only... 
like it's cheap for me just to be like hindsight 2020 oh i don't i don't work in my field so college is not worth it for everyone everyone's story is different but most entrepreneurs they've been leading the charge on this and saying what i've kind of been thinking they're like gary v says this he says if you want to be an entrepreneur or go into business college is not for you and so um they're going to be the early adopters in the education revolution that realize oh yeah college is actually not what it used to be and then they're going to be the masses and then it's going to be the late adopters so be an early adopter and i know if you want to be a digital nomad for sure you don't need a degree because why do people go to college like the first reason is to get that degree so you can get a good job so you can get steady income right and live a happy life i guess um or like please their parents exactly that's that's the number three reason in the video i did recently called is college worth it in 2018 released that last week um and of course the the number two reason for um uh, in my video was for the social experience for the fun a lot of you know once in a lifetime experiences um a lot of you know friends i think making a lot of friends is probably the core of that and also girls um having fun trying new things but then the more i think about this it's like i mean everyone's story is different for some people college is amazing the best four years and for some people it's just shit they weren't popular you know it or was like just in betweener yeah like an in-betweener and so it really is different between everyone um, but even if you did have an amazing time, like I had a great time in college, like I was in a frat, all, you know, social and everything, Which frat? but, um, ATO, ATO, um, but then not to take anything away from this, not to take anything away from the experience, but I'm just speaking to my past self. Um, if I had to pay for my own college, like if I had to fork, if I had to go 50 grand in debt to have that experience, it's, it's, it's a deep conversation that high schoolers need to think about themselves because like at least in america in most communities i can imagine it's the same in most high, high school environments it's what college are you going to yeah. what college are you going to what are you going to study how many applications do you have do you have in there's never a question hey are you going to college hey uh have you thought about if university is is the right time for you have you thought about it? Not even are you gonna go, but they don't even ask, have you thought about if this is the right time? So I think in the, the 21st century in 2018, it's like, is 50,000 the right thing? Cause you're paying for the degree. That's the first, that's the whole paradigm. You're paying for a degree for and paper. for paper, exactly. And the economy now is simply different than it was in our parents and our grandparents age. It's simply a different economy. Um, I've been doing deep dives on YouTube on this subject recently and Business Insider says the same thing Forbes magazine they all have videos called is college worth it and vice and they're all coming out with these videos and economists are saying like yeah you know employers kind of don't really care about the degree anymore because everyone has them even if you have a degree it's just gonna be in a stack of papers and application papers of people that also have degrees so this whole degree thing needs to be rethought and with today with YouTube with online courses with um, you know basically specialized online education and with business books and with podcasts and with like conferences that you can go to network at it's like if you want to go into business like you don't need a degree for that it's like I think you have to just have like the balls especially if you're 18 yeah. just have the balls. balls to question it you don't even have to take action just yet but just at least question it when everybody around you your friends uh, your family whoever else your girlfriend boyfriend is encouraging you or they're going to college like just have the balls just stop for a minute and ask yourself if that's the right thing for you right because you will find people that are like you who are questioning it as well it's just a matter of matter of finding them like just stop for a second and see if that's the right thing for you yeah. which is why again i'm so passionate about youtube because it helps you break out of your bubble it helps yeah. you see people like me and that this is i you know i'm out here because i found others like me like johnny and jabril most notably um living the digital nomad life which is uh brings me back to the how i how i'm here let's get back to that story so if you want to if you're if you've already been thinking about why should i go to college watch my video called is college worth it um link here yeah link blah link you'll find it um 
So yeah, oh yeah. So how did I get here? Why Thailand? Um, it's a great question. Is uh, because Parker during his last year of college, his uh, last senior semester, he he oh, he was majoring in hospitality, and he signed up for the study abroad slash semester abroad program through Wazoo in Thailand. Wow. So Parker did a semester abroad in Thailand. Um, uh, th- uh, between three different cities they worked they visited basically they job shadowed like some four star resort or five star resorts I mean uh, in Bangkok Phuket and um, Kuala Lumpur that's awesome it's another country so um, I've been to Kuala Lumpur it was great I vlogged so it wait, check it out so with him? no 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 so okay, he so I was already okay just got a phone call from Matt Laker uh, other entrepreneur homie who maybe will be uh meeting up with uh, later so um so Parker went to Malaysia yeah so Parker when he was on his study abroad and they're turning the music on here so we gotta wrap up and you gotta go to to your person he has a personal training uh, client here in 10 minutes but um Parker when he was on the study abroad he would call us every day and be like guys you need to come out here it's so cool out here in Southeast Asia and so this was summer of 2013 and me and Danny and a couple of our friends were like, yeah, why not? Like, we have money, we're all working, let's take a vacation. And we were actually already planning a vacation to Tokyo, but we're like, yeah, let's just go see Parker. That'd be so fun. Oh, okay. So um, so we came here and visited Parker for two weeks in Thailand uh, between here, Bangkok, uh, Phuket, and also Hong Kong for a few days on the way home. So it was a two week trip. And I remember on the way home to the airport, I was like, wait, what? It's over already? That was so short. It was so short. And this is my first time really traveling outside the country in my life, let alone first time in Asia. So the whole time was culture shock. And like just the, during the end of it, I was like just getting used to the culture shock. I was just getting over it. And so anyways, went back to, uh, to Bellevue and got back to no- Donking Doors. And I had that post-vacation depression like everyone talks about. My start at the airport. Yeah. And, um, and then eventually Parker came back, uh, uh, you know, shortly after. He did two months total. And he was like, yeah, dude, two months was not even enough. And so we're both like, yeah. And so we're like, dude, we can totally get hooked, get a job at one of these resorts that we, you know, uh, job shadowed. Like, they'll, they'll, they'll hook us up. So we're like, yeah, dude, let's just go work in Thailand for a year. That would be so sweet. And so we're like, yeah, high five. And so um, we're on the same mission as far as we both want to like travel for more for a longer period of time or like for a year after college. And um, so we got an apartment together, um, cheap little apartment, the cheapest we could find and it's $950 a month in Bellevue in this old building. It's probably getting knocked down right now. Um, it's very close to being knocked down. Let me tell you, Bellevue is blowing up. It's crazy. And um, uh, it was a one bedroom studio so it had a sliding divider for the bed section very cozy yeah very cozy and I slept on the couch with blankets over it for a year and I'll tell you the point the turning point that changed our lives we are moving in we set up the TV in the, the you know common space the fucking department is the studio and um, I worked for Comcast so I could have I was like alright what package do we want I was gonna do the TV and the internet package, but I was like, you know what, fuck it, let's just do internet only. No TV, no cable. And so uh, I got an Apple TV, hooked that up to the to the TV, and from then on we started watching YouTube only. And so what did we watch videos about? Thailand, traveling Thailand, jobs in Thailand. So watching videos about Thailand, getting excited. We put posters of Thailand on the wall. Like Buddha posters, like PP Island beach posters, on the weird. And we had a calendar that said, "Goal, back in Thailand by May 2014." We ended up ma- we ended up making it back by October 2014. But anyways, so through watching YouTube, we def- we discover whose channel? Johnny FD, the one and only Johnny FD, and he is a drop shipper, and he's been like working online in Chiang Mai, and so he was do he was a blogger. He was doing one, these one, video blogs. Last year was uh, uh, I discovered him. We discovered him in like late 2013. 
And so we followed him for a while and he recommended this course about dropshipping called Dropship Lifestyle. So we uh, so we bought that course because we were like, oh, duh. Oh, this kid, this guy, he's living in Thailand like 11 months of the year, travels when he wants, works online, makes money. We're like, dude, that sounds way better than teaching English or working at a hotel. So then we got red pilled as far as the working online digital nomad lifestyle. So we're like, oh my God. And then we also found Jabril's videos. He has a, he, he's been traveling for like freaking eight, seven, eight years now. A lot of videos in Thailand. So we watched his videos and we were relatable. He's no hip hop head kind of guy, like kind of like us. And we we're like, oh, hell yeah, dude. He's having fun out there. He's got the nightlife videos. So we're like, yes, this is what we want. And so um, Johnny eventually announced early in 2014 that they're putting on a conference in Chiang Mai, Thailand, all about digital marketing, uh, drop shipping and uh, e-commerce. And we're like, dude, let's go to that conference. That'd be perfect. We can have an excuse to, to go back and get started. And we can meet everyone and figure out what they're doing and just go, you know, two feet in, jump two feet into this full time thing. So all of 2014, we were working nights and weekends, side hustle on our drop shipping stores. They weren't making money because we were newbies. And um, all the way up until October, they were still not making money. We, we, we probably, before we went to Chiang Mai, October 2014, we had our uh, uh, Shopify stores up for maybe like three, four, five months and kind of like building it and trying to learn this whole Shopify? Yeah, online marketing thing. Shopify, yeah, store on Shopify. So I had a store called portablehottubuniverse.com and the whole method was is you put out Google ads specific for inflatable jacuzzis and portable hot tubs and you try to have the cleanest, freshest, newest store just for that niche. And then the philosophy is some people won't want to buy on Amazon. They'll want to buy from the niche store that's like preaches customer service and stuff. Anyways, ended up not making money, but we saved up uh, about eight or 10 grand each, me and Parker. Uh, he was working at front desk at a hotel and I was doing the door to door thing. This time corporate, in-house corporate for Comcast. So it was a corporate job. I had benefits. I had a scan card. I had to go into the office every day at 10 a.m. Um, do like phone calls, follow up phone calls in my cubicle. I had a cubicle for about a year and a half, a year, year and a half. And I had a quota, a bi weekly quota. And I was on the sales team. It was like inside slash outside, mostly outside sales, AKA knocking doors, walking the streets, walking through residential neighborhoods. And I was doing that and I remember just getting so burnt out so burnt out i got to the point where i would park like in like a parking lot somewhere and i couldn't like near a neighborhood couldn't even get out of my car to go walk the neighborhood i was couldn't even get out so corporate sales burnout is a real thing I'll, if you guys can relate let us know and um yeah so we were like we were telling everyone yep we're gonna move to thailand we're gonna move there october 2014 so we were we were already saying what we were gonna do before we did it and I really recommend that a lot of people they're like I'm not gonna talk about my goals until they're real I'm like no start telling people like what you're gonna be doing like what you're doing and so we just told our friends yeah October we're moving to Thailand we did it and we went to the conference met it was a hundred other like-minded entrepreneurs some already making six figures some just beginning it was a good mix and we met this one kid that was crushing it selling on Amazon so we we're like wow we got to try that so we did that and uh, more about how all that works on my blog, livingthatlife.com. And that ended up being, ended up making us a few grand a month and slowly has been growing since that. And we're like, we can stay out here, oh my God. And the visa situation is very simple. You just have to leave the country and come back every few months. It, that's just how the world keeps track of people nowadays. Um, and yeah, we, we started in Chiang Mai for a year and then we went to Vietnam for six months, a couple months in the Philippines. Well, we visited Blake in Africa for uh, for a month. Did a road trip around Kenya. We did a couple a couple times a year, at least once a year. We do a big trip. So we visited India, Colombia, Europe, Amsterdam. Anyways, point is he's yeah. balling. Point is I'm not balling as far as money, but I am balling as far as freedom and as far as location freedom and schedule freedom. My number one is like I love I love my new job because I can wake up whenever I want, get my work done. I can meet a friend here on a Thursday afternoon just because it's my birthday and do an hour podcast. I don't care. 
I am so free as far as being out of that rat race, being out of that nine to five. So if you know that you don't want a nine to five for sure, man, there's more options than ever. And um, it is 6.31 right now. He's got to go at 6.30. So uh, thanks for just like sitting alongside. I didn't want to do this by myself. So it's more fun with friends. Well, still, Body system. We're going to do it. We're going to okay. do it more. We're no, just... no, no. That, that's it. That's the rest of my story. And that was, tw- that, was, that, was, have that, that was 25. Have questions? I have questions about your story. So it all started at 25. And I'm just like 29 today. I'm like, oh my God. It's blowing my mind. Like, wow. That was... People ask me, yeah, but like, are you really ha- Yes, it was the four fun four years of my life, of course. Way more fun than college, people. Way more fun than college. Not to take anything away from that, but like, I'm just thinking back, like, if you're in high school and you can jump straight to this, you can still go to fucking music festivals and like get with girls and do beer bombs and do coke and do drugs. You can still, you don't have to do that in college. A lot of people are getting blacked out every weekend and doing coke and doing molly and like that's like the fun of college fucking girls that's like the fun of college you don't need to do that in college you can just make money and then go to the clubs and pop bottles and get vip and do it in bangkok and do it in kuala lumpur and do it in mexico city and like you can have way more fun than in college you know 20, 19 through 20 through 3 than you can in college like open your mind and that's why i'm excited to share this with all you youngins Woo! <laughs> anyways closing remarks oh that oh it wasn't recording no! audio cut off okay the point that i was making okay we'll, we'll probably take from that audio but anyways people ask me like um was it really Like, are you really that happy out there? I'm like, yes, it was the best. This has been the most fun four years of my life. And then people talk about college and they think about, oh, it was so, college is so fun. Is it because of the parties? Is it because you're getting blacked out drunk and doing drugs and fucking bitches? Okay, that is fun. I agree that's really fun, but you don't need to be in college to do that. You can do coke, do molly, get get drunk anywhere in the world. And let me tell you, it's even more fun in Bangkok. It's even more fun when you're in Tokyo or you're in Chiang Mai. And there's, it's a mix of people from all around the world. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like you can, you know, from 19 to 23, you can have way more fun traveling the world and partying than you can partying and like a house party in college, let me tell you. And so obviously it's not easy to do, but it's easier than ever. And to all these youngins who like, if you wanna go to college for the party and for the girls, that's not the reason you should go. You can have, you can party without that. Start making money online and then start making money earlier than all your friends and then invite all your friends to the club and get a table and pop bottles and then you'll get a bunch of bitches and you can fucking do drugs and that's all fun and you can still go to the football games you know you can still go tailgate you don't have to go to college and then um Kay was saying about the college debt thing on a more positive note yeah he was saying about the the college debt thing so i'll I'll just wrap it up because i did want to talk about the college uh the college debt thing it's like let's say you're going to go 50 grand into debt after you finish college, then you're gonna have to be paying that. Now, I was lucky enough to have my dad worked a job his whole life to pay for his kids' college. So I am very lucky that that happened. And one day I'm gonna pay my dad back for that. But most people don't have that. And like, they're paying ridiculous monthly uh, debt payments to their college debt. So if, if your parents are gonna pay for your college, what I tell people, young people, make a business plan and pitch that to your parents say hey instead of this 50k going towards college i'm gonna start my own brand i have a business plan i'm gonna start my own startup app product whatever it may be and think of that and it all comes back to what do you want for your life like how do you want to live if you know you don't want to live the nine to five that college is definitely not for you if you want to do your own thing it's definitely not for you think about how you want to live is that still recording oh there you go What I was going to say to follow up to everything you said is that I meet so many people here that are young. They're still 18, 19, 20, like college age that come here and their experiences are so much richer than somebody who is just in a college in America. And apart 
don't do drugs here, please. The the I'm saying theoretically. Theoretically, don't, because the consequences of you doing them and then if something happens are horrible. Like, don't do it. Here, just have fun. Yeah, just drink. Drinking is okay, whatnot. But what I was gonna say is that the same amount of money you're investing into college, this 50, 60 grand, 100 grand that you're gonna go in debt, there's so many more opportunities with it, whether it's travel, whether it's investing that money to start a business, into self-education, and you don't have to take out a student loan to go travel, but just the same amount of money, always think about how you can invest it in a better way, how you can get a better return on investment than just getting a paper from university. And obviously from everything I'm saying, I'm not the biggest fan of universities. Yeah. But, yeah. Everyone has their own story. And if you're watching this video, you already have the same mindset most likely. So that's why I always ask like, it's your guys' job to share this with on Facebook, to share this message with other people who maybe haven't asked these questions to themselves. So, as sunset is coming, let's wrap that up. That's the story of my life basically. I told it. So mission mission accomplished. And uh, thanks for being with, with me today, Kay. And um, have fun personal training. And then I'm going to have fun go doing whatever the fuck I want. Because I'm a free man. Yay! <laughs> so blessed. But the, the overall thing I just wanted to I'll join appreciate. Later, okay? Yeah, we'll, we'll meet up later. I wanted just to appreciate my life and just uh, soak it all in. And I was glad to do it with someone. So. Yay. Glad to have joined. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and um, look at this view right now. Woo! Wow, it's Bangkok for you. Come on, BTS.